many of you ran into this situation where you want someone to be, I don't know, or doing a, doing a deadlift and they turn into a Romanian deadlift, or maybe they're they're squatting and they're going like this instead. And yeah. you can't, like maybe they're just not bending their, but you could say bend your legs more, right? Or like I have this clientele logo on my shirt, whatever they have on their shirt, they could say someone's doing this on a deadlift and you want them to bend their legs more. Instead of saying chest up, you can be like, okay, show the clientele logo to the wall. Because there's no way you can show the clientele logo to the wall without getting your chest up. Versus not everyone knows what chest up really means. So that's just, that's an easy way that can change a few things. And then um, just in terms of keeping your back straight too, this is good for squatting, deadlifting. If it's not focusing on back straight, it's focusing on what the dowel is actually doing. So that's kind of external. So if someone can do this, the dowel stays in contact, sort of focusing again on what the dowel is doing, then because they're keeping their back flat. As soon as they go into flexion, that outcome changes. So that's one. Those are just some things that you can use to be a little bit more creative than just saying back straight and everything like that. Um, in terms of things like engage your lats, like who knows what that means, right? You do, you do, you do, you do, you do, but does someone who's never lifted know that know what that means? I've done the orange juice thing many times, but how should this you, Jen? The orange juice thing is pretend like you have an orange underneath your armpit mm -hmm. and you're squeezing it so hard that you're gonna make orange juice. Do your lats automatically turn on when you make yeah. orange juice? Yeah. So another one that you can do is just pretend like you're in the deadlift position. We'll stand up straight first. So you could just like, if I had this towel right here and I said, all right, pin, pin that right there, pretend mm -hmm. like you're doing the deadlift. So if I was, if she was doing that right and engaging her lats, I should be able to pull that out. Go down, try to keep it stuck there. Yeah, so now she's definitely doing it a lot more. So it'll be a lot harder to pull that out. So that's gonna do a lot of things. Can you do that in a flex back position well? Can you flex, do the deadlift and flex your back? Like, yeah, it's probably hard for you to flex your back. You don't do it wrong. What do you mean? Like wrong? Like, yeah. yeah. Is it harder for you to get that? I mean, you probably still can, but it might be a little bit harder. Yeah, to do. Um, other things that you can do, I think this one is, a great way to make sure somebody's like keep your back straight, right? Okay, we can say that. Do people really know what that means? All right, I gotta stand on this. So now you can come over on the scale, get a little bit closer to it. So someone would have to stand up and turn it on. I'll make sure it doesn't level out. But if you had somebody do a deadlift on this, so you don't want this, can you see the numbers on the scale? Not really. Come closer. No, like yeah, you can get down, get down right on it. So, like, do I want someone to go right into lifting 62 pounds off the ground, or do I want them to build up tension? So that's zero pounds before I've even moved. Okay, this is an awesome way to teach somebody to keep their back straight when they deadlift. Like, how can I? I mean, I can do that, but then look, my spine's gonna go up higher if I did that. Yeah. So if I if I if I do it wrong and I'm taking it out of there, like, see, I've noticed how my back's not moving at all. Okay, let's say I started out right here. Let's say I want just going like this. That's what would happen if somebody was basically like, okay, trying to pull the weight out. You would easily notice that their back was going into flexion. So that's just a super easy way to, it's self-correcting. So you already know it's gonna happen if you do that. Um, so I, that's just some examples of external props that you can use um, when you're doing things like that. You can definitely do this on other exercises too. So. External cues, for example, when she says grip the floor for a squat, that's an external cue because the focus is on the floor. Okay. Um, other things, I have. I wanted to do some quick isometrics. Uh, well, let me jump in real yeah. quick uh, in terms of external cue. I mean, a lot of a subset of that is kind of like the tactile cue. Yeah. You know what I mean? One of the big things that I like to do, which is has always been proven to uh, create great success in having people correct their uh, technique is putting your own hand on there. And then using, instead of using a dowel, using other like props, use your hands. And you know what I mean? If anybody's been in a class of any, any sort and the instructor comes over and puts their hand on you, it automatically they're like, oh, this person's giving me personal attention, straight away. So like the fact that like, you're gonna place your hand on them, that, that already helps to like formulate this like added value that they're getting out of your, your, this session with you, okay? So if Justin is like, uh, let's say he's deadlifting with like a flexed like uh, thoracic over there, and I just say, okay, I put my fingers right between his scap and I say, 
yeah, squeeze my fingers. As soon as he do, does that, and I'm like, yes, right there. Because I'm like, I don't want you to do anything up here, so they know what not, what to avoid, and where to focus their attention, which is the mid, mid scat. And then I'm saying, oh, you just started rounding, so squeeze it again. So as soon as he knows where he's trying to squeeze, now you're isolating and you're teaching these, these clients exactly what you're trying to do. If I'm pointing here and he's squeezing up here, he's squeezing, but he's squeezing up here. I'm like, no, you're up here right now, okay? I want you down here. And that's how you do it. At least, you know what I mean, in terms of tactile cues, I found greatest success with that. Because now they're identifying with where you're trying to isolate. And then they're putting their focus onto that exact location. You mean, it, again, like with the lats, like with Justin, if I'm like, all right, this is, yeah, that's nice and hard right now, right? And as soon as they disengage, I'm like, look, I can push my fingers right in there. There you go, create a bulletproof lat. And if I can do that and it's nice and stiff, then I know it's, then you, you've you engaged it. You mean, like a lot of times when people are bench pressing, they don't know how to engage their lat, and I just have a, a hand here, and I'm like, I'm like, look at, there you go, squeeze that, squeeze that. So when they're feeling, where your hand is, they know where to target that. So, you know what I mean, that's a great tool that I use all the time, and it always works like 100% of the time. Um, I was just gonna end quick with isometrics. Sure. Um, Jen, we did this before, but, so if you're ever doing a hold at the end of a lift, this is super, super easy way to make sure people are doing things correctly. Like, let's say your person's, do, your person's doing lunges and they're going like that, well, don't let them come up until they fix it. Okay, so if someone end, if someone ends their lunge like this, be like hold, and that that would be like the tactile cue, cue she was just talking about. This is the easiest there. You can't come up until you get end in the right position. Um, for the isometric things, you can use it for anything, but the load shouldn't be too heavy. Okay, so if I if someone has errors in their squat, and maybe they can squat, they're squatting like one thirty five. I'm gonna have them do isometrics with like ten pounds on each side. Just until they get it down, um, I do. Who struggled with people getting push-ups down correctly? I, and especially at the bottom position, getting to the bottom position. I have. Me too. Can I use you for an example? Yeah. So if, if we just made the push-up a lot easier, like what do you what do you see? People pinch their shoulder blades together way before they're supposed to, and then they don't get that. Just going to the push-up position. So if we did like a band one right here, go all the way down, and then just hold. So try to get your butt down a little bit more clear there. So you just be come right back up. So we just want her to hold and end in the right position. Make sure she can actually finish in the right position, come up, and then she feels comfortable being in that position too. Go back down, and then come right back up. Yeah, so just even a little ISO hold there. We did that on the squat because, I won't say, I won't say, I was gonna say, I won't say his name, and then feet were rolled in like this. Well, someone's like this is the bottom of a squat, you were doing a front squat, well, stay down there, and then fix it before you stand right up. And he's, he stayed there for like three seconds at the bottom, right? Yeah. Like you can't come up until you're in the right position. Uh, for cueing, I find that, that that's just super, and when you're doing that, you can use those little light little touches to make sure they're doing it correctly. So let's, I just want to review with the, uh, the split squat. Yeah. Okay. Now with like knees coming in, okay, what is, there are two ways to actually like fix this problem. I can tell Justin, okay, here's my hand. I don't want you touching me. Go up and down without touching me, okay? That's one way of doing it, okay? Or the other way is I come on the outside of his knee and, and if, he, if he's in, so he's got valgus, okay? I'm like, all right, push against my hand. I want to, I want to feel a constant pressure no against way. my hand while you do this. Wow, on time? Yeah, those are, those are all good cues. What is yeah, that so you mean you can be creative on your own and just kind of like put together your own style of like cueing or coming up with some sort of analogy. Mm -hmm. But whatever it is that works for you in the client, use it. But you, we're just giving you examples that, of what we found successful with some of these things. If you guys do have issues with any of this stuff, you can ask us and we can share with you like what we do, yeah. how we do it. Isometrics get created with your external cueing. Yeah. I just learned about uh, what that's good, Natalie. Neurological stuff. <laughs> what is it like where you force somebody to do what they're doing wrong, and then they end up correcting it? Yeah. Well, you you're basically teaching them the difference between right and wrong. 
You yes. mean because if you're just telling them, oh, this is that's the wrong way of doing, do it the right way, do it the right way. A lot of times I'm just like, so for people who like constantly have the traps engaged, 